What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you guys today's video. Five defensive tips and techniques you guys should be looking to implement. These are things that as you're building your base, you think about these and you make sure you're abiding by these different guidelines. It's not specific types of bases, it's things within your base. These are general good practices to follow for the most part. Um, and it's going to improve your base building. So quick video. I enjoy making these types of videos because they're quick to the point and it's always fun to talk defensively a little bit. Some of these I may have addressed before in the channel, others may be new. Um, let's get right into it though. First thing, this applies to every town hall level that you have Infernos. These are very versatile tips. Um, these are the, the, the rule of tiles basically and this doesn't just apply to Infernos, it applies to Expos. Um, but mostly important buildings, Eagle, Inferno, Town Hall, it's the gap of, let me get this spring out so I can kind of point around, it's the gap of tiles between the building and the nearest wall. The golden numbers are either 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 2, just 1, 2, and the reason these are good numbers is if it's 2, bowlers can't reach it, and bowlers are very commonly used in kill squads and like smash type armies, P.E.K.K.A. smash, P.E.K.K.A. bobat, whatever. Um, if it's a two tile like this, the bowlers can't reach it from outside. If it's four tiles, the queen can't reach it. It takes up more space, but it might be worth it um, to make it so the queen can't reach it, especially if it's on the outside. You don't want the queen to be able to take it out with a queen walk, so definitely want that four tile gap if we're talking this is like the outside of the base over here. Um, but generally speaking, these are the two good lengths you want to have when it comes to Infernos, Eagle, Town Hall, even Expos to some extent. Um, keeping the bowlers or the queen unable to reach from behind a wall. Next one's a little more large scale. Um, this actually looks a little bit like a base I have that's done very well. The basic idea here is big open compartment and within it we have these little uh, island type compartments not, not really island but just we have small compartments that are floating this cluster is floating within the big compartment and what I've noticed this does you can even copy this um, not like mainly the inferno and the wall setup these are just kind of randomly placed buildings for the most part but what this does is upon entry the troops split in a really weird way and a spells are very ineffective here because we don't have um, troops filling things in like a the width of a spell more or less like a rage or a heal they split so they're gonna go down one of these channels here or here even if you like jump over this stuff they're still not gonna take the jump across they're still gonna split trust me you'd have to do like earthquake which be, wouldn't be worth it because you're not really opening much up um, that can't already be reached so this is a very tricky thing and also I like the gap here with the um, the inferno because what I've noticed on this type of base is people won't enter right at the corner because it's so difficult to funnel things in on the corner they'll come in at like a side like right here where this wizard tower is more or less but that means often the inferno is missed because of this dead space next to the inferno the troops tend to just go this way and what does go this way won't lock onto the inferno right away this is a very good type of setup just trust me on this one if it's a little bit uh, difficult to see it right now um, I like this type of setup at Town Hall 10, 11, 12. Um, I have a base that looks like this on my Town Hall 12 account. This is a good thing to have. Um, you can even extend this farther out, but um, the basic idea here, once again, is we have cluster of small compartments with an inferno right over here and some dead space surrounded by a bigger compartment like this. Um, it's a, a, a difficult setup. It makes spells less effective. Okay, moving along here, this um, this one is important mainly for Town Hall 11 and Town Hall 12, where we see Ice Golems being used to tank Wizard Towers uh, for Bow Bat, for Drag Bat, anything that has bats in it, the bat spell. It's a little bit specific, but trust me, you're going to be thankful you put this in um, when your base doesn't get 3-starred by bats in some type of army composition. So oftentimes what people will do is they'll drop down the ice golem to tank one of your wizard towers so the bats can sweep through. Obviously wizard towers are a great counter to bats because they take them out in huge numbers with the splash damage. 
basically, if you have a wizard tower on the outside here, right up against the walls, this is the outside of the base over here, you want to have, generally speaking, for most of your wizard towers, these outer buildings, they can be mortars, they can be cannons, archer towers, uh, Teslas, typically it's mortars though, because they're already going to be used on the outside of the base. They make it so the wizard tower can't be tanked by an ice golem with a simple ice golem drop anywhere. So you can see no matter where the ice golem is dropped on the outside of the base here, maybe we need another building here to fully extend this, um, no matter where the ice golem is dropped, it's not going to trigger the wizard tower. Maybe a little bit close if you drop it right around there, if it comes in at a weird angle. But you can move this farther out like that. And yeah, the ice golem is not going to be able to tank the wizard tower, meaning the attacker can't use that. They have to use a freeze spell, which um, is going to cut into their spell space, which is already going to be tricky because they have all these bad spells. So the main point here is you want to have defenses on the outside to make it so the wizard tower can't be tanked by an ice golem. And you can move the wizard tower a little bit further back in if that helps. There's not a left, not as much range now. Um, ooh, software update, cool. Um, in that case, you can maybe just have one building. You don't have to have the Tesla there. You can't do it still because the wizard tower is pushed back in. Um, look to do that, and uh, that'll help defend bats. Okay, almost done here. A few more. Uh, this next one. Pretty straightforward. Um, the air defense is a good counter to healers for a queen walk, and oftentimes we see people put it back here. Um, that way, the queen can't take it out from outside the base, and if she starts walking along, the healers will get in range and they'll get taken out. But also, another thing you can do is have it up there because then it's very difficult to start a queen walk there because you literally can't drop the healers anywhere in like this area right here. Um, because the air defense will immediately start shooting. There's nowhere back here you can drop them. So if there's a place someone might start a queen walk, you can kind of disarm that to some extent by having an air defense. Now people can be tricky, delay the drop on the healers, drop her at like an angle over here with the healers, like back over here. Um, but it makes it much trickier to start a queen walk if you have the air defense pressed up towards the outside of the base. And notice we have one more tile of, uh, of leeway here. We could have pushed things farther to this tile. However, we're thinking anti-e-drag. Um, I guess the air defense is here, which is already somewhat anti-e-drag. But um, having a, that two tile gap wall plus this uh, empty space means the electricity chain from the e-dragon can't bounce into the base. Um, so there's multiple things going on here, but the, the main point of this one is using the air defense on the outside pressed up against the edge of the whole base uh, real estate itself to prevent uh, the starting a queen walk there. All right, last thing. This is simple, simple, simple. Uh, goes back to a video I made specifically on this topic, but I'm sure there's new people who haven't watched it. Um, if you search up my channel for spring traps, you'll be able to find it if you want the full video. But the idea here is we're using walls to guide hog riders into the spring trap. And that's especially relevant now with hogs becoming so popular, especially at Town Hall 12. Um, basically, the idea is if you don't have these walls here, you just have a spring trap. The hogs will cut across and maybe one or two will hit it. Because um, it's going to come across all over the place here. Um, very spread out but believe it or not the walls the hogs are lazy that's the way I like to think of it they don't like jumping walls unless they have to so if they take out this archer tower they're all gonna funnel themselves through this one tile gap in the wall to get to that cannon assuming it's the next closest defense so having the walls guiding the hogs into a single spring trap ensures you get all three hogs knocked off uh, in a single go so this is a great thing to have on the back end of your base, away from like your queen, uh, where you know hogs are likely going to be used, if hogs are going to be used on your base, uh, where they'll likely path through. Sometimes you can have a good idea of where the hogs are going to go through, um, typically away from the town hall, but not always. So just kind of use your best judgment as to where to put them. Now you can argue, okay, well now the attacker knows there's going to be a spring trap there. You're almost saying, hey, I have a spring trap because they see this and they can infer, okay, that one tile gap's a spring. But oftentimes, they're going to think there's a spring there anyway, so really, for most of your spring trap locations, the attacker already has a good idea that they're there. 
Um, so you're not really doing yourself any favors by being mysterious and having everything open like this. But I guess you could have some decoys if you wanted to, where you have this, but there's actually no spring trap there, if you had the luxury of that kind of setup. But generally speaking, uh, spring trap with the walls to guide hogs into it. You can even do a double like this. Um, pick your poison, but uh, I will say, go back and check out my video if you're curious and want more information. Uh, just look up Bisectatron Gaming, Spring Traps should come up. Anyway though, that's it. Um, lots of talk, hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned a thing or two. These are just some various things to think about for building bases and defending. Um, we did end up going a little bit longer than I thought we would, but you know, lots to say. So hope you guys found it helpful and until next time guys, I'll see you later. Bisectatron out.